With the PS5 and Xbox Series X both scheduled for a late 2020 release, we have officially entered the death rattle of our generation. That is our generation of video games, not, uh, you know, humans. Although probably that too. In any event, the 8th generation of gaming has had some sky high highs and some sky low lows. And while we do aim to be mostly positive here in Operation Sports, sometimes it's fun to just look back at all the times people fell flat on their faces. So today, we're going to look back at the absolute worst and most embarrassing face plants of the last few years in sports video gaming. If we miss anything, feel free to shout it out in the comment section below, over at the Operation Sports forums, or just loudly yell your opinion at me if you ever see me walking down the street. We're Operation Sports, I'm Matthew Ederer, and these are the top 5 worst sports games of the 8th generation. Number 5. Rugby World Cup 15 Oh dear sweet rugby. Why can't we get you right? It doesn't feel great taking a shot at rugby games here, almost like I'm kicking them when they're down. But then again, rugby is based on kicking people when they're down. Also, rugby video games have never really been up. Rugby World Cup 15 took a mostly reviled formula and regressed it, offering awkward controls, outdated physics, a lack of game modes, and spotty licensing, with numerous fake players populating a small amount of teams. But don't take my word for it. Consider this random internet opinion supplied by user Silverback615 via Metacritic.com on December 2nd, 2015. Quote, I have no words for this game. If this game were released in 2001 with the same graphics, engine, etc., the game would still be rated low. I'd rather get put in jail for 25 years than play this game for 5 more minutes." End quote. Wow. For someone who said they had no words for this game, boy they had some words for this game. Number 4. NBA Live 14 NBA Live 14 was EA Sports' first foray back into basketball since NBA Live 10, and the game appeared to actually get worse after the four-year layoff. Pre-game and halftime presentation was on point due to the ESPN licensing, but NBA Live 14 whiffed on the little things, such as graphics and gameplay. In fact, NBA Live 14 was so bad that EA Sports released a blog apologizing for it in November of 2013, written by executive producer Sean O'Brien. Anytime you have to straight up apologize for your effort, you probably screwed up. NBA Live 14 basically solidified the belief that EA was nowhere close to 2K on basketball, and it essentially sewered the entire Live series and put them in a hole that they've never dug out of. But hey, at least they apologized. Number 3. NHL 15 there was almost a national referendum in Canada because of this game. Well, not really, but people are quite upset, boy howdy, and rightfully so. Coming off arguably the GOAT hockey game in NHL 14, EA Sports responded by removing approximately 100,000 things from their follow-up game, the first on PS4 and Xbox One. I could sit here and list missing game modes for the rest of this video, but among the big ones, you can no longer sim shifts and be a pro, you had to watch the entire game. There was no minor league career, you began your career by choosing which team to play for, you know, like sports. In franchise mode, the drafts were fully simulated by the computer, you couldn't pick players, the AHL was gone, the preseason was gone, fantasy drafts were gone, they even took three stars out of the game. Fun trivia for you, three stars have been a hockey tradition since 1936-37, when gas company Imperial Oil started it to sponsor its new three-star gasoline. It's been a hockey tradition for literally almost a century. How are you going to forget the three stars, EA? Number 2. WWE 2K20 I'm sure you've heard by now that 2K20 has some issues. And don't get me wrong, this game is still, to this day, pretty broken. It's the second worst sports game in years for a reason. If you paid full price, or dare I say chipped in extra for the DLC and the fancy pre-order versions, I can see how you would despise this game. But to their credit, 2K did actually patch this game to the point that it became playable. We're laughing at 2K20, not with it, 
but there is still something to this game, which is more than you can say for our champion. Number 1. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5 Tony Hawk 5 was like having a cool old relative or college buddy come back into town only to find out that they're now an alcoholic and completely dead inside. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5 entirely lost the charm of the series, most notably in removing local multiplayer to focus on more online park play, which itself was strange and entirely disjointed. On launch day, the game already needed an 8GB patch because it was so glitchy, laggy, and unfinished. There was no skate shop, no real create a skater as much as there was paint over a skater, maps and challenges were somehow entirely over the top while still being boring, as though more effort went into things like giant glass beach balls than the actual skating. Every other game on this list has some redeeming quality, or had such low expectations going in that it doesn't really matter how they did. When Tony Hawk 5 came in with enormous expectations, and it failed to live up to those expectations spectacularly, giving us an end product with almost no redeeming qualities, and a game that's so bad it nearly killed Tony Hawk. Not the man, the game franchise. Possibly the man as well. That's going to do it for us today at Operation Sports, but if you like this video be sure to ring that bell and hit that sweet thumbs up. Do all those things that they tell you in YouTube videos because they do legitimately help. And keep it locked here for some more fun celebratory gaming content like this. Sports are back, at least for now, and we've got some fun stuff planned for you over the next few months as we all ponder the viability of professional sport and our very existences. Thanks for watching everyone!